Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about ensemble learning. So, you probably have seen this TV show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And the idea, if you haven't seen it, is the idea is they ask a contestant a series of questions, and one of the sort of tools that this contestant can use to answer their question is they can at one point survey the audience to ask everybody in the audience to answer the question and sur survey them, and then they would get the poll results essentially of that. Uh, and so this is the very actually similar to the idea of, you know, if you consider each of these individuals as different models. And, and so this idea is, is it possible to actually, you know, we, we don't expect each of these individual people to actually, you know, be knowledgeable, 100% knowledgeable about a given topic, especially when it gets to the harder questions. Uh, but we do expect them to, you know, potentially have a slightly better than at random performance. And so this is actually a really interesting question is how do we actually best combine a series of, of you know, weaker learners or, or a, superior, a series of, you know, uh, simpler models that may not be as powerful, how do we, can, can we actually combine them to get a very, very strong, power, uh, powerful model? Um, and so this is this idea of ensemble learning and kind of two different approaches that, they, that they've kind of generated, and that's called boosting or bagging. So first we're kind of talking about sort of the language that they say. So sort of they have this idea called weak learners and strong learners. So weak learners are this kind of idea of any model that's a very simple model that, that essentially only has very slightly uh, better than random properties. Uh, but the really interesting thing is if you think about if I just have essentially even just a 51% accuracy, uh, for instance, if I had infinite number of models, you know, I'd have, I could have a very, very, very strong model uh, because everything, uh, if I had a series of models that were trained, you know, especially if they were trained on different sorts of features and kind of trained differently, um, then there would be a way to actually combine those to get a very strong model at the end. Um, and so two different ways that people have kind of thought about how to actually combine these are called boosting and bagging. we're going to talk about bagging. So bagging is short for bootstrap aggregating. If you're not familiar with bootstrapping, it's this idea if you have a single data set, it's this idea that you, you essentially make a bunch of new data sets that are based on sampling from the data set with replacement. So essentially you would make, you know, you would say, so let's make a thousand bootstrap uh, samples. So uh, for a thousand times, I would just randomly pick random data points um, and it doesn't matter if I pick them twice, if I pick them three times, I would just pick them and just generate random data sets. Um, and they use this a lot for generating confidence intervals and different uh, sort of, you know, estimates uh, for trying to get, you know, ranges of, of, of how models really function. And so this idea is you can actually use this to sort of train these models to actually predict, uh, you know, make stronger predictions at the end, as we were talking about uh, combining weak learners to get a strong uh, learner, a strong, powerful model. And this idea, yes, is that you can actually, you know, average different models together and, and this, there is this really, you know, powerful modeling, uh, model averaging effect um, that essentially reduces this error that you would actually get, uh, you know, applying to unseen data, essentially, if you can, if you can average over different models. So that's another benefit of why, you know, people and uh, you actually use this act, sort of a uh, bootstrap aggregating or bagging approach. And so this is actually an example from Reed Johnson at the University of Notre Dame, who's using this uh, banana data set, it's just kind of a synthetic data set that looks like, uh, has this very interesting uh, decision boundary shape. And this idea is essentially that we can uh, combine these uh, different we can make a bunch of series of, of weaker models and, and, and we can combine these models. Say so this is just one model uh, decision boundary reduced by one decision tree and then we make another one. And these all kind of look different because these are all generated from different sorts of data sets. They're different from different samples of this original data set. And then we can do this. And then once we actually combine these, some of them kind of look like weird, like some of these are kind of nice. Uh, but some of these are kind of really strange. But once we combine these, uh, we can actually get, you know, very interesting uh, um, uh, decision memory that actually does a really good job of classifying this data. Um, and so we can see and you, there you can think about how because we're kind of sampling so much, there is a sort of or overfitting effect. And there is that does exist. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about bias. Um, but you can see how you can get really interesting models, even combining a bunch of uh, simpler models. So next we're going to talk about boosting. So boosting in contrast to bagging, uh, boosting is each model is made using the really hard to classify samples of the previous model. Uh, so this idea that you resample the, the previous point, you resample not randomly as we did before, but you resample the data set based on the error from the previous model. 
Um, and then you boost the performance at the end by performing the, mo the models together. And so if you think about this, this really has to be done in a different way. So if you think about the difference between boosting and bagging, and apparently this is a really common interview question, one of the things that you should know about the difference between boosting and bagging is that bagging models are all done in parallels. Uh, you, you start with your data set and you random re resample, you partition your data set uh, into a bunch of different, you know, random resampled uh, uh, data sets, and then you make all your models, you can make all your models at the same time. But in boosting, you actually use the performance of previous models and you use the, the, the harder to classify points. And at the end, you kind of, you know, average them together in a, in a different way. Uh, but you need this sort of sequential uh, um, sort of argument. So you can use both of these. You can understand how you would need both of these to really understand um, um, the difference between the two. Bagging is done uh, in, par in parallel, but boosting is done sequentially. So just a little bit more about the difference in boosting and bagging is uh, in boosting, it, you can use this at the end of the day, you essentially use the errors that you generate along the process in order to, to kind of evaluate the models at the end of the day. Um, and also uh, you do make this weight, but in bagging, you know, you usually just uh, combine all of these without, you know, weighing your models in, in each of these because each of these data sets were generated independently. Um, and so that's another example of how you kind of really need, for boosting, you really need to keep in mind that you are using uh, sequential model generation. And so two possible, uh, you know, things that they use for boosting and bagging. Adaboost is one of the most popular uh, boosting implementations. It's used as a binary classifier. You can use it in scikit-learn. Um, it's pretty, uh, you know, interesting. I think do think it's, it's a model that you should definitely look at uh, for a lot of different problems, especially, you know, just in your given field. So when you talk about really the understanding, you know, when to use the difference between when to use boosting or bagging algorithms um, is essentially they both sort of have this ability of, of higher stability or higher or lower variance, uh, which can be good or bad, um, as, as we'll demonstrate in a second. Um, but this idea is of bagging, uh, it, will, it really won't lower the bias if you think about because um, bias is sort of a, a function of your sampling method of your original data. And if the original data is kind of biased from the mean of the actual um, you know, population, then you're resampling that original data isn't actually going to improve anything. Uh, but boosting can actually generate, I mean, it still really can't lower the bias either, but it can also, it can, you know, tend to lower the errors. Uh, but, but really, if, if you are noticing that your, your models are overfitting, which is the case with a lot of decision trees, and it's sort of the um, approach behind random forest is a really intelligent sort of bagging algorithm using decision trees. Um, but the reason why is it, that it uses bagging is because of the model of overfitting. So in this case, we you know we're overfitting, uh, bagging is usually better than boosting. So boosting, again, it tends to be, it can be better when, when it's just a really hard problem, your, your weaker models aren't as good, but when your models are you know, kind of too good, which can be the case with more simple models like decision trees, uh, bagging tends to be a little bit better. And so this is just a, a depiction, of, if you recall, sort of stability or variance and bias. Um, and so if, if you, this idea that, you know, if, if we resample here, we could, you know, really have a, a low stability, um, but high, high, you know, bias that wouldn't actually encompass the true population parameter uh, versus, you know, something that would actually encompass it potentially something like this, that would, even though it has a very high stability, um, the fact that it doesn't have bias. And so uh, when you think about it, it's just really the, the kind of problem of you need to just get more data as much as possible, as much data as, as good as possible. Um, but this is, you know, sort of idea if you just think about, you know, when you, when you do implement these boosting bag, bagging algorithms, really think about how you're sampling it and how you're, how many samples you have is really important for incorporating and, and creating uh, successful models. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you all for also boosting my profile, boosting my ability to actually pay rent by teaching machine learning videos like my lifelong dream is. Uh, thank you all for helping me bag those likes. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. Bye.